Another player profile Another PPP episode today every day until opening day and we're doing all the players on the Yankees because this is talking Yanks. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Jake, tell them where we are. Jimmy, we are in the woods of Tampa, Florida, the swamps. Um, we're outside of Steinbrenner Field. Uh, we are by the parking lot, but we are just in the woods. Uh, there's a little bit of wooded section. It was a windy day, so we parked the RV a couple feet away, and we are in the sticks right now. Speaking of sticks, ha! Huh. That's not Hicks. It would have been cool if it was Hicks. No, but we're no, doing no, Mikey no, 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 Talkman. No, no, Mike Talkman. Mikey likes T. What's his middle name? Do you know? Michael Ooh. Thomas. It seems like a Thomas to me, a Michael Thomas Talkman. You just love when the last name and the middle name have alliteration. So That's obvious. It'd say it right there. Michael Robert Talkman. Mike MRT. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Michael Robert Talkman. Pretty fundamental. From Palatine, Illinois, which is close to where Illinois. I live in Illinois. Yeah. Lake Zurich. Went to the Bradley Braves for college. I think that's in Illinois. Wow, let's go to his early life. The early life, they always wanted to be super early. Uh, you know, like, learn to walk at age. Yeah, you yeah. know what this is going to be, though. Yeah, it's all the I Jimmy Garoppolo. Gar- 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 you wish you could say it wrong. Garoppolo. Uh, friend of the program. Friend of the program. Mikey Talkman was on this program two days ago. Obviously, this is going to be released way later on. But uh, if you haven't listened to his sit-down with us, you should. He loves baseball. And he likes Loves going baseball. deep into baseball. I and mean, when we asked him some baseball questions, he had some really thoughtful and kind of insightful answers. He, uh, it, it, there's a little bit of a computer with Mike Talkman. Like he, because it, it's not just baseball. I mean, we, we talked like his Netflix shows he got into, and obviously everyone knew about the Game of Thrones stuff last year. We asked Wade about him. He was like, how is Talkman thorough? Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he, he likes to dive into a topic, and it was funny when we found out him and Higgy are friends, because Higgy definitely likes to listen or receive. I guess that's a catcher wow. thing. How about that? I'm operating at 0%. <laughs> um, but yeah, talk, talk daddy to me, and he is one of... I don't think he's one of the players circled in spring training, like, eyeing his performance, but he's one of the question marks lineup-wise because we've kind of done the him and Andujar thing because it's do you like him in left field or do you like uh, Andujar at DH stand in left field? And y- you know I've been on the Talkman train before we, we linked up with him a little bit, and I feel like we are going to go in circles a little bit because – uh, we also like Andujar, and there's there's a world where we want to see Stanton and left and Andujar at DH, and those those guys are special hitters. Mike Talkman was really good last year. Right now, you're bringing up his stretch, which I've had saved on my phone for the past ten minutes. But that's kind of how we operate. I mean, this stretch is amazing. He went nuts. He it's 48 games, so it's small, but it's once yeah. he became the everyday player. Yeah, I mean that's two that's two months worth of baseball. 48 yeah. games, but it's a 988 OPS. It is a 325 batting average, a 403 on base percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Like when he, and then the only reason it stopped is because he got hurt at Fenway. Right. Came up lame playing well, a ball and left. Can I butter knife you even a little more than that? Because within that stretch from July 4th, nice day. If you're into America and fireworks, bad and day for dogs. Yes. Terrible day for dogs. Um, which is wow. tough because I do love the 4th of July. Uh, 28 games from July 4th to August 13th. So a month worth of action. Um, he's playing almost every day. <laughs> 100 at 103 plate appearances, 407 batting average, 476 OBP, a 1.267 OPS while playing like top elite level defense. Yeah. Like the metrics have him as an elite, elite defender. I don't even care. You can tell he's good just by watching him. Yeah. Play. And it's he's both. He uh he's a free safety. That's what 
<laughs> oh, I forgot how much yeah. he, he when he's running it looks. He like looks he's like tra- he's intercepting a pass. We should have yeah. told him that. We should have told him that. We're Fuck, idiots. Fuck, we're so dumb. We're idiots. We'll have to give him like a thank you and say we forgot to do that, and maybe he'll like it. I don't nah, know. Nah, he wouldn't like he that. He wouldn't get He'd it. Just bro. be like, uh, okay, okay, just stop reaching out. Um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of funny. I think we need to relive the path of Mike Talkman again. Listen to our whole. If thing, anyone is a brand new Yankees fan, traded in 2020, and they're like, "Who's Mike Talk?" There's a um, there's a famous clip. Mike Talkman. There's a there's a I was gonna say there's a famous clip of me. Yeah, but that's not the famous clip of you. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> there's a clip that someone on Twitter sends me all the time, sure. and it's it's a post game recap where I'm just like, Who, "Who's yeah. Mike Talkman? Why? What?" Who is he? And uh, it was a brutal uh, task. He he gets traded for literally right before the season. The Yanks are going to an exhibition game against the Nationals right before the season. He gets traded. He was going to be a Rockies AAA guy in Albuquerque, and the Yankees traded Philip Deal for him, who was dealing in spring training. And Talk Daddy you, comes bro. in uh, to be essentially the backup center fielder because uh, they didn't want they didn't trust Wade. It's they didn't trust Waders out there. And, um, hey, he was another one of the Cashman analytics find, a guy that was doing stuff in the minor leagues. And what sucked was so they they started giving him a little bit of playing time, and I I think we had some dudes get hurt. Uh, We obviously had some dudes get hurt. And he – we didn't even know his approach. His at bats were tough when he first That's what we couldn't figure out. Does he work the count? What's your game? Does he attack? Does he hunt fastball? Play your game. Play your game. That's so Herb Brooks, 1980, uh, Miracle on it, Ice. It took him US a little bit. Versus do, the Soviets. Do you remember his breakout moment? Yeah, it was the double nope. in Baltimore. Nope. When he starts slamming the ground and no. going like this. And that then was start not the break. That was the laughing at him moment. What, what happened before that? The, red, the home run against the Red Sox. I think it was his first home run with the Yankees. We didn't really know what Mike Talkman was about, and he like he hooked and launched one, and we were like, "All right, Mikey T." And then the he had a big game. The moment that I'm talking about was the first series of the season. Yeah, that's not his breakout moment. He was terrible for a while. But that was his breakout moment as like, "Oh, this guy bangs the ground and gets excited." Yeah, so that's personality not what we were talking about. No, still no. What was his home run versus the Red Sox? I mean, that was his like breakout. Like, I'm a member of the team. He had a big game against the Red Sox, and we're like, oh, and it's like, okay, he can, so he wants to pull, I think he slapped a double down the line, and I think he hooked a home run, like, pretty deep into the bleachers, and we're like, okay. April 16th. So this is what you do, huh? So you can turn a homer, and you can also slap a ball down the line? Because, dude, we were so lost with him. We had no idea if he tried to go the other way. We didn't know if he had power. (laughs) We had nothing. And then he showed us, and we're like, okay. We might be able to work with something. I have it here. It was against Chris Sale, double to right field to make it a three nothing, make it a four nothing game. Yeah. And then later on in the bottom of the sixth, versus Erasmo and Ramirez, he hits a home run. Home. Urshela run. and Gardner score three run home run to make Big it a four, four nothing game, a seven nothing game. Big day. Still searching for a term for that where you sit the pen. It's called like arrest the pen homer, like you know. You're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Oh, You're up four nothing. I got gotcha. you. The big guns are warming up. Talkman hits that home run. It's not a walk off homer, obviously. It's not a go ahead homer, obviously, but it's like a. It's a Thanos. It's an end game. I don't like that. I know you don't because you don't like those movies, but yeah, but it's something that's cool we, for us. We need geeks. to we need to find a name for that. Yeah, I just did. But rest, you don't like it, rest and that's pen, how this works. Rest <laughs> <the pen homer. laughs> but if you like it, uh, it was a two zero fastball, so that was cool. Good nice. job, Mike. Nice, Mike. And then uh, later on, he popped out in his next at bat. And then you mentioned he got hurt before the playoffs. That kind of sucked. We were doing an outfield juggle, like, is Hicks coming back? Is Togman coming back? And it's like, oh, these injuries are just never going to stop. Um, and here we are, spring training 2020. That home run. We're in the woods. No one knew it was his first career home run because no one knew what he had done with the Rockies. Right. Do you remember? So, like, they didn't celebrate yeah. it at all. And then uh, he to- – <laughs> I fucking forget the story, but I think he told someone the next day, like, you guys know it was my first ever. It was my first. <laughs> Dude, my where, where's my fucking cake? It's kind of like the Ross Ross from Friends. Which scene? And it, early on, they take him out to the Rangers game, and they're they're like, "Oh, it's me and Carol's anniversary of the first time we did it." And everyone's like, "Okay, Ross is kind of a weird character." And then Ross comes out to the guys, and he's like, "Well, she was my first. She was my first. Yeah. And they're like for oh oh oh. 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 Speaking your, of." Oh. 
<laughs> Here we are in the woods at spring training 2020. What are your expectations for Mike Talkman this season? The Tricky. M- the more we talk to people about this. Tricky. The more we talk to people, the more I'm getting the vibe yeah. that he's the opening day left fielder and Stanton's the everyday DH like right. for the most part until Hicks comes back, and there's two months before that happens, of ball. Ball. And, like, Hoke was saying that, and a lot of people have been saying that. And we thought Stan – I thought – I was under the impression initially that Stan would get a lot uh, more reps in left than I'm now getting the vibe he's going to get in left. Hoke saying the Stanton theory of them wanting to preserve his body more at DH, that, that you pushed me that over too. the edge. I was saying that, but, it, I mean, it was just my hunch because Stanton is owned so much money. But to hear – a guy who's in there day to day and hears all the little comments and things like that. And I mean, at Andujar, you know, potentially getting reps in left field at some point. I, I don't know. I, I think Talkman will be out there whether, uh, like even games he's not playing. I mean, think about the alternative options. You might see him as a late inning defensive guy. Like he could rack up games like a hundred starts, but 130 games. You know what I'm saying? Almost NL ish. Uh, I don't know about that, dude. Because because when Hicks comes back, right? And we just did the Hicks one yesterday, or the last PPP that we posted, right? We said if Hicks is healthy by June 5th, right? Or 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 July 5th, whenever it is that yeah. Hicks is healthy, he's on the 25 man. And he's on 26, 26 man. And he's going to be, like, in the starting nine because, like, they're paying him a ton of money. Right. They believe in him. And they should. And a really hot Mike Talkman isn't going to mean Hicks Ooh. is not in the starting nine. It's just not going to mean that. So Gardner becomes the platoon. Gardner yeah. becomes the fourth outfielder. Stanton becomes the, the stays the full time DH, and then you have Talkman in left, Hicks in center, Judge in right. That's if everyone's healthy and everyone's playing really right. well, right? And that's uh, again, that's the ideal scenario. Injuries will hit, uh, but fucking you know, Gardner's gonna be playing every day. Who knows when Hicks is actually ready? Yeah, Gardner. We did this before, but he just finds his way in the lineup for the past decade. Um, I don't know. I I just think Mikey T again. He's one of these. Uh, he's a cashman find. The dude racked up a huge war last year. If you're into that, like I mean, seventeen hundred. I think it's seventeen hundred. A th- dude, three six war and two hundred sixty at bats. Well, defense helps a lot. I know, but like if if you if you extrapolate that, extrapolate if, that. If you put that over a full season, I mean, he's a <laughs> he's a seven war player, which is which is like <laughs> borderline low MVP <laughs> votes. <laughs> Uh, which, again, and that, that goes back to more so the depth and how this Yankees team is built and why there are championship expectations. I mean, we're talking about this guy struggling to be fine playing time where if he was on another baseball team and he had these numbers, we could say, hey, if this guy's real, <laughs> he could be a, he could be all-star, you know, ni- 19th in the MVP voting because yeah. the local guy throws him two votes. It's tough, man. I'm really rooting, like, so part of me, Okay. Here in we the go. areas I don't want to publicize. Okay. <sighs> mm. Here I'm, it is. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm rooting so hard for Mike Talkman to become the everyday dude because I love those stories. Right. But someone gets hurt there, but the right. scenario I just said still could have Hicks, like, coming back and being – the center fielder. I know what you're saying. You're but, like, does Gardner get insulted? Is Gardner, right. like, is, you know, or is that the natural thing for Gardner to become the fourth outfielder and Gardner eats up that role? Like, in a perfect world, for me, Talkman's left fielder, Hicks comes back, takes center field. Yeah. Gardner becomes the fourth outfielder. Um, but I don't, I think there's about 0.0% of that happening. It's a it's a weird thing, man. And again, hopefully, uh, injuries are going to dictate a lot of this. And I, how many times did the Yankees use the same lineup last year? Wasn't it three times or something? Something. Yeah, but it's low. it's always low. Like right. the most ever is like six. So like even if all these guys are healthy, there's going to be a juggling match, and they'll they'll figure it out. But uh, let's keep them healthy and let's all play good, and and that should be less of a problem. Mikey T, it th- it feels like there is this weird Cashman finds and like baby bombers debate. That's kind of happening right now. That it's Hicks like, was a Cashman fine too. Like I know, but you can look around and you see 
you know, there's something really cool about Hicks, Talkman, Urshela, Voigt playing. Oh. And then there's also, like, all the young and just Yankee guys. And Judge, it's, Glaber. I mean, those guys, those guys are playing. The baby but bombers, like, though. Mike Ford, um, Andujar, Andujar. Um, I mean, even with, like, the stand, the stand trade – and the Cole signing, you can still build like a really, really cool homegrown and trade team. Yeah, that's awesome. Go Yanks, huh? Love this team. I'm, I'm gonna stay bullish on Talkman. I'm gonna stay bullish on Talkman. He can play defense. He's kind of again. He's like a well. I just said this on talking baseball, but he's almost a five tool light player. <laughs> that's what we used to say about Hicks. Yeah. Um. And I I don't know, man. He we. If you didn't listen, if you didn't listen to the Talking Podcast, go check it out just to hear him talk about his approach versus lefties. Yeah, don't spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it, but it was awesome. Were um, you about to spoil it? No. Okay, great. It was. I, come on, man! I just did a whole teaser. Tease. It's a whole thing. Teaser. Um, I, I'm going to remain bullish. I think the innings are going to be out there. I mean, nothing from Hicks has promised this year. Let's let's go over what the baseball reference is. Okay. Baseball reference. Baseball reference projection for no, Mike. Talkman, Talkman is as follows, Jake. They have him getting 352 plate appearances, which a little bit of a boost from last year is 88 I games. I love, I love your game math. Well, you divide it by four, four, four at bats a game. I mean, yeah, 88 games. Oh, yeah, he played 87 last year and had 260 at bats. So, well, that's because this was that would be if he starts right. every game. But they have him with. Uh, Oh, they got you. 14 home runs. Okay. He had 13 last year. Similar. And less at bats. And less at bats. Got one more with these ones back. 255 batting average. That'd be a little bit of a slip. 277 last year. 335 on base percentage. It'd be a pretty big slip. 361 last year. Yeah. And uh, 790 OPS. He was 865 last year. I mean, his stats last year are good. And then, Jake, check this out. Oh, here's something. Baseball Reference is reporting these projections with 59 percent. Yeah. Uh, what's the term they use? Reliability. Is I I think you. <laughs> As if anyone's relying on these yeah. fucking projections. You just you have to be honest. If Mike Talkman doesn't have a great year, I mean, we wouldn't be shocked. There's a lot of other outfielders. Who knows when the playing time is gonna come? The Yankee season doesn't hinge on him in any way. I mean, like, we should not be surprised if he repeated last year because when, when he was playing well, it wasn't like, oh, there's a blooper or, like, you no, know. But he was good at spraying the field a little bit. Yeah. Like, he I got mean, those blue pits and that, and, it, like, sometimes he just threw the bat in him. It wasn't all, like. Remember this? I feel like we're talking about our kid now, but remember remember the first time he talked back to an ump? Like, no. I, I feel like that's a very vivid memory in my, our head. We did a podcast episode, and we were like, yo, Talkman's talking to umps now. What'd he say? Like, he just got comfortable. Okay. Like, he, I think he was literally, he was like, was that in? And I go, okay. But I still, th- there's there's a certain comfort level that comes with playing. He hit that level. I still love him after watching, after he hits a home run. And that's when Tyler Wade was, like, thorough. I've got a hot take. Ah, oh, god damn it. Okay. It's not hot. Oh, it. If Mike Talkman plays a hundred, a hundred ten plus games, yeah, I'm not worried about his output. If Mike Talkman plays eighty one or less games, I'm worried about his output. Everyday player, I mean that's just kind of it's not that hot. It's a warm take because if he's an everyday player, it's not a hot take. I, I agree. If he gets everyday reps, I think his ability will shine through. If they platoon him, if he's bouncing around, if he's off and then he's on, I think that's tough on a lot of guys to yeah. come through in that role. Yeah, and um, but he's going to. I, I think he's going to get the chance early on, Jake, to be an, a a five games a week player. Yeah, more uh, more games started this year. Mike Talkman or Miguel Andujar? Talkman. Okay. Defense. I mean, I like that. Started. Yeah. It played is very easier, Talkman, because he'll come in as a defensive replacement or or he'll right. come in for but the lefty yeah. bat. A game started. That's a better question, and that's why you asked it. That's why I asked. You're a smart it guy. Way. Well, what you? Who do you have? Wait, I don't know if that's fair. You, d- you, you. The instinct is to lean Talkman, but again, we. It's such a fun, weird spring training conversation because two years ago, Miguel Andujar was uh, <coughs> like a a top three MVP on the team. 
And even Talkman with a really nice year, I mean, he was never – like, did he ever crack above seventh in the lineup? I mean, we could look that up, but our analytics team just found something on their finger. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can look it up. I had to it get was it just off, a funny moment. I had to get camera. it off my <laughs> finger <laughs> to, get, to touch you, the screen. You got pretty lost. Uh, all right, I'm going to go to uh, 2009 batting splits, and then it'll go like by order. Miguel Andujar is a potential top of the lineup guy. Talkman kind of not. No, but because he's a lefty, he may. So he batted second in five games. Fourth in two games, fifth in five. Those could be like pinch hit appearances, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, that's actually there's no game started there. So you're right. So he never started batting B- below both fifth. fifth. Yeah. Okay. And majority of his starts came seven, eight, nine, which is fine. But if he's the only lefty, seven, eight, nine, classic. Well, it is. It is a classic. It's joke. A classic. You can't not think about it. No. Okay. All right. I think that's all. I think that's it. Tell us what you guys think about Talkman. I had some analytics debates. Who's this? He's a nice guy. Is He's a Talkman friend of ours now. Is this Talkman? Whoa. Oh. We're talking Mike Talkman. How are you doing? It's Brian Hoke. He's in a nice thing. ride. That thing got a Hemi? <laughs> oh, 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 Hoke revving his engine. The camera around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to play the outro music, and then maybe we'll chat with Hoke. Okay, Hoke is parking, and you guys have to leave now. See you later. That was Mike Talkman's episode. Let us know what you think. <laughs>